All right, so to get to the bottom of things, let's first look at a very the mo one of the perhaps the most famous military general of the Ming Dynasty, the late Ming Dynasty, known as Qi Ji Guang. Okay, I think some of you must have heard of him. He's a really famous figure in the Chinese Ming history. So it's General Qi. Sorry. Qi. Uh, sorry, Guang. G U A N G. Right, so General Qi Ji Guang. Basically, he is the person that was responsible for driving back the Japanese pirate. Now, regarding the Japanese pirates, there's actually also something interesting, right? For many generations, the Chinese have been claiming that these are professional pirates from Japan that came to raid the Chinese southern seaboard around the Fujian province. However, in more recent years, there has been research that actually indicate the majority of the members of this pirate are actually local Chinese and also people from Southeast Asia. So they're actually not completely made out of Japanese people. Furthermore, they're actually not professional pirate either, right? The real, the real origin of these pirates, they're actually merchants from Japan originally that came to trade with the Chinese local government, but they were cheated and they lost all their goods and money and unable to return to their home country because they probably you know, has debt over there, they can't pay. And as a result, they became pirate, all right? So not saying that all of them are merchants, but the origin of the, of the whole pirate crisis during that time most likely started when the bunch of Japanese merchants sort of basically got cheated by either local government or by you know, business people that has tied with government. So basically they cannot get the justice from the local Ming government and therefore they resulted into piracy. And this basically contradicts the Chinese official claim. And the reason the Chinese claim that these are real professional pirates is because initially they campaign against them failed miserably. Okay, and obviously whoever is responsible for this campaign cannot say, you know, oh well, uh, you know, we suck. They can't say that. Instead they say, oh, you know, these Japanese pirates are really, really strong. You know, they're, they're just good, they're good, and they're very deadly, and that's why we can't win. So either way, the initial, you know, troops sent to fight the pirate failed miserably, which is why the Ming government eventually called upon Qi Ji Guang, who's one of the most famous military general at the time, to deal with this southern sea border pirate crisis. And when Qi Ji Guang went to the south and started fighting with them, you know, in his own text, he's also mentioned that uh, the southern Ming troops were actually quite disorganized and untrained and undisciplined, and you know, it's very hard to, to win the pirates with troops like that. And he actually had to take quite some time to retrain these troops, and as well as bring his own Qi family military, so like basically the military that followed him around, and so basically I had to get some military from other places to help with the campaign. In another piece of text, Qi Guang actually talked about the, the pirate weaponry, aka war dao, right? The pirate, uh, the war, like I said, referred to Japanese, or so Japanese blade. And for this part, he actually mentioned, what he said was, Chang bing bu jie, duan bing bu jie, chang liang duan. What this means is that when they are fighting against the Japanese, Assuming against the Nodachi, right, the, the, the long Japanese blade, he said the long weapon does not fit well against it, and the short weapon cannot reach. Okay. What the, what he means by the long and the, the last sentence means the weapon often often breaking in half, which most likely referring to the long weapon. So at the time, the Ming's long weapon predominantly is a spear. Okay. But unlike what we see as modern spear, in the Ming Dynasty, they spear, especially the troops in the south and some of the less organized troops or less funded, they use bamboo spear. The bamboo is much cheaper to come by, which grows locally in the south, rather than the you know the material that we see in the north, such as bai gan or whatever other can or other kind of material. And the problem with a bamboo spear is that it's relatively cheap to make, but it's also tend to break a lot easier. So according to Qi Guang, when they use those bamboo spear against the Nodachi, 
and often get cut in half, which you can understand, right? Uh, there have been people who dispute this idea of qi guang because they say you cannot cut, for example, a bai la gan, right? The, the, the modern uh, wood that we use for spear and stick. You can't just cut that in half with a nodachi, which is true. But if you actually look at the Ming record, you can see a, a picture here of the of the bamboo spear. If you look at that, you realize that you know if you're using a bamboo spear, then there is a pretty good chance that you can slice that that pole in half with a very sharp nodachi. And of course, the short weapon he's referring to the Ming Dynasty uh, infantry blade dao, right, which is similar to the one I showed you just now, the broad uh, traditional Chinese martial art kind of style dao. They say the Ming Dynasty is probably has like a different tip end, but uh, the the size and and width are basically the same. And with that blade, obviously, you know, with a blade you can't cut it in half. But the problem is. You can't reach a nodachi that's 1.4 to 1.6 meters long, and you know if you use a regular dao, you know, like against a nodachi, it's pretty much suicide unless you can manage to get really close. But that's very hard. So going to Chi Guang, right? That is the two problems his army had to face, or has encountered when he was facing off with the Japanese pirate. Now, according to Jonathan Bluestein's article that he wrote. He actually suggests that Miao Dao, right, the blade uh, that I showed you earlier, was actually used against the Japanese pirate, right? He says it's actually cross blade on the Ming Dynasty's battlefield. And that cannot be true, because if it is, then Chi Guang would not have said what he said about Chang Bing Bu Jie, Duan Bing, Chang Bing Bu Jie, Duan Bing Bu Jie, Chang Yu Liang, Liang Duan, right? He wouldn't say that. Why would he say the long weapon get cut in half and the short weapon can't reach if they actually have a weapon? Similar to Miao Dao, they, they can use against it. So that's completely not true, right? It's basically current Chinese nationalists who are trying to make themselves feel better, right? That could not have happened in history. Furthermore, eventually, how General Qi Ji Guang defeated the Japanese pirate is by using a specific formation maneuver. He basically took a, quite a lot of time to train this formation that he designed specifically to take out the pirates. Whereas over here, you'll see an illustration that comes from the Ming Dynasty military record that shows the formation that Qi Ji Guang used during his campaign against the pirates. This is known as the Yuan Yang Zhen, or the Mandarin Duck Formation. So contrary to popular belief, where they all suggest that the Mandarin refer to two, so it's like you know two-man formation, but that's incorrect. As you can see in the, in the picture, it is actually a 12-man formation, okay? So each 12 men will fight as a battle unit against either one or two or how many ever pirates, but they usually, is you know, it's basically 12 against a few, so they want to overwhelm them with number to cover up their lack of, um, of, of singular combat ability or individual combat ability, also the lack of superior weaponry. So two men in front hold shield, right? Shield is the most important part of any military, right? Whether it's in China, in Europe, and anywhere, even in Africa, they have shield. Shield very important, right? We don't use it anymore in modern martial art training, or or rather in the civilian martial art training, because you know if you look at Qing Dynasty civilian martial art, people carry weaponry but they don't carry shield, right? That's because shield is too much of a trouble to carry around in everyday life. But if you're on the battlefield, you are, you are expected to make all kind of weaponry. The shield is almost a must-have. So the two people in front hold shield, right? They, they, they are the one who protect them. And then there's also a captain who basically tells the squad what to do, right? So there may be some kind of um, change of formation and you know what, what to do when certain scenario present itself. So there's a captain. On the two sides, you can see that there are two people holding a weapon called Lang Xian. What that is, is basically a long piece of bamboo where they keep all the leaves and branches at the end and they either tie blades to them or they don't, right? This is uh, unclear. Some records suggest you, you tie little blades to them. Some suggest it's just used as it is. I guess it depends on the budget and the time you have to prepare this weapon. And furthermore, they're actually uh, laced with poison. So the whole point is, it's a long pole arm, relatively light and full of branches which are potentially spikes. And if they're laced with poison, all you have to do is just you know make small cuts on the person's hands or arms and they'll eventually, you know, have either cut off their arm or they'll have to die of poison. So, and also that kind of weapon, you know, keeps people at bay because they have the reach and also they are full of 
thread, right? Unlike if it's a blade, it's only one edge that is the thread. And if you block that, you can get away with it. With this, if you block it, he might still yank it and, and cut you by mistake. So it's a very annoying or very cheese weapon, right? If you use on, uh, online gaming language, it's basically playing cheese against the other guy. And then behind them, there are basically four spearmen who are there to find opportunity to basically run the, the pirates through or, you know, or, or, or so stick through them. And then there are two people with a, a fork, a trident-like weapon that is actually used to trap the enemy's we weaponry, in this case, most likely Nodachi. So basically, if you think how it looks like this, if you can catch the blade, right, between the trident and you turn like, like this, you can basically trap it, right? So it's very similar to the Japanese own traditional spear, right? If you see Japanese spear, unlike the Chinese spear, which is just a blade, Japanese spear is a cross shaped. And they also use this cross section to catch Nodachi or Katana and then yank them and try to pu push them down. And there are two men basically towards the back that holds that to find an opportunity to, to lock the blade down so that the other spearmen can stack them through or the guy with the bamboo thing can, you know, cut them. And then lastly, at the end, there's actually a guy with a firearm, probably a flintstone um, firearm, and I'm not sure what kind of weapon they use at the time, probably flintstone. And obviously, you know, given the reload time at the time, he's basically there to to get a shot through whenever he's able to reload, and everybody in front is there to help keep the enemy away from him so he has time to reload. And every time he reloads, that's basically a free shot, and hopefully he can kill someone. So you can see that in order to defeat the pirate, Chi Yi Guang have to come up with such an elaborate design, okay? And this clearly shows that they do not have access to a blade or weaponry, a singular weaponry that can rival the power of Nodachi. So it is impossible for Chi Yi Guang to have Miao Dao or a variant of it at the time he faced the pirate. Otherwise, he would not have to go through this whole formation training. He could just simply, you know, whoop that blade out and fight them on equal terms. And here's an image of, of a more, because just now it's, a, it's a basically a laid out diagram to see where everybody is. This is a more realistic portrait of how formation looks like in real life. You can see they're more compacted, but the formation more or less stays the same. Okay, next we're going to look through a few pictures that are taken directly from Ming Dynasty military manuscripts. All right, and you can see that the area that um, is circled, well, that is marked by red, is basically the, the Chinese character for Wu Dao. Okay, the war blade, or the Japanese blade. And you can see that during the Ming Dynasty in these manuscripts, military manuscripts, the name War Dao has been used repeatedly, right? Which means at the time, they clearly called this weapon War Dao and not Miao Dao, okay? And the very fact that it is called War Dao is already enough evidence to show its connection to the Japanese pirate rather than, you know, to the Song Dynasty Jama Dao. All right, and while we're on the, you know, on the topic of drama, though, here's an interesting fact. Here's a diagram that taken from a Song Dynasty manuscript, military manuscript, that illustrates uh, Dao Ba Se, right? The eight type of blade that are predominantly used by the Song Dynasty military. And out of those eight, we can see that they are no drama, though. And furthermore, all these blades kind of favors a thicker blade rather than the thin blade that you see on Miao Dao. So, the whole idea, so that further proves that the idea that Miao Dao came from a Song Dynasty variant is very unlikely to happen. Of course, I'm not saying that there are no Jama Dao during Song Dynasty, it's just not one of the it's just not popular enough to be recorded in the major military manuscripts. Okay, and then here is an illustration, a, a painting from the Qing Dynasty, which illustrates a Qing military troop that uses the same blade that, you know, it basically is a extension from War Dao. And as you can see, the blade is still curved, right? You can clearly see the curve in this artwork and the long handles. So you can see that even during the Qing Dynasty, uh, the Qing military adopted War Dao and it still remained to be curved. So the straight blade that we see today of Miao Dao is most likely a modern product. It's not what the military in, in the Ming or the Qing Dynasty used to use. As to why this blade became straight, it's hard to say, but one of the possibility is that the modern Chinese, at least from the Republic era, right, when the Japanese start to invade China, they want to cut off their tie to the Japanese, and therefore they try to make the blade look different to the, to the original source, which is the Japanese Nodachi. 
that's basically it's the same reason why the name the blade is eventually named Miao Dao. Miao Dao was a name as far as we can dig up, it's a name that was starting to be used around 1921, is when the name Miao Dao was first used. When it was taught in the Nanjing Guoshu Academy. Okay, before that the blade has many names, but its main its predominant name is War Dao. Another one is basically Dan Dao, based on the Dan Dao Fa Xuan. And, uh, and just in case that someone wants to argue that Dan Dao Fa Xuan suggests that the blade is actually not named War Dao, if you actually read Dan Dao Fa Xuan, right in the opening intro, it mentions that Jin Yi War Dao Wei Shi. So they actually say that we use War Dao as the weapon of choice. Okay? So it's actually referred to War Dao constantly in the manuscript. So for anyone who want to argue, that Wodal was not used, they clearly never read this manuscript. And furthermore, if you look at uh, the introduction of Dan Dao Fa Xuan, okay, it actually says, was it written by the author, Cheng Zongxian, that Yu Yu Qiu Qi Fa, Yu Zhe Shi Liu Yun Feng Zhe, the Wu Zhi Zhen Chuan. Okay, what that means is he wanted to learn this, this knowledge or this skill of the single blade, aka Wodal. And he went to Zhejiang province and found a teacher called Liu Yunfeng, Shen De Wu Zhi Zhen Chuan. Basically, he is well versed in the Wu Japanese ability. Okay, so clearly that in the intro it refers to the origin of the blade, where it came from the Japanese pirate. So the fact that actually undisputable where this Wu Dao come from. And of course, if you compare Dan Dao Fa Xuan to the modern Miao Dao form and technique, you can clearly see that its movement come from. Dan Dao Fa Xuan. And Dan Dao Fa Xuan basically really points its origin at the Japanese pirate Nodachi. So the connection here is very clear. Okay? And I have also seen people who make the argument that um, you know, Qi Ji Guang have also founded um, another variant of this martial art, of this blade, and they call it Xin Yu Dao Fa. Okay? Basically, Xin Yu is the year where he basically encountered the pirate and eventually invented his own weapon system using the Nodachi blade. And this is basically being passed to the Koreans as far as I know, they still practice it. And some people in China now are, are reviving it, right? So the Xinyo Daofa is a different system to Dan Dao Fa Xuan's uh, Daofa, but they still all use the same blade. Xinyo Daofa came first, Dan Dao Fa Xuan came, I think, two generations later on. Um, but they are based off the same weaponry, right? They are all using this War Dao Nodachi rather than any Chinese invented blade. And furthermore, here's an interesting uh, side story. Apparently, according to Qi Ji Guang, uh, during his campaign against the Japanese pirate, he actually by chance came across a manuscript by the Japanese, right? He called it the um, Yin Liu Mu Lu. Yin Liu is basically um, a, supposed to be a system of Japanese Kenjutsu. Mu Lu is basically the catalog, so he basically found the manuscript. Uh, there are people who believe that Yin Liu is actually a cursive writing that's supposed to refer to Yin Liu or Yin Liu, right? The Kage Ryu. And for those of you that don't know, Kage Ryu is one of the main systems of Kenjutsu in Japan that eventually passed to the uh, the Yagyu family, right? Become the, the Yagyu Shin Kage Ryu. So supposedly, Qi Guang actually had a menu that he uncovered most likely one of the pirates dropped it or something, we don't actually know, that actually traced back to the Kage Ryu of Japan. And he supposedly looked at the, the, the diagrams and the writings on that, and he incorporated with his own understanding of blade work. He also added in some staff work, you know, stick stuff, and possibly some spear work. And together he made up his own system. So the blade it definitely came from the Japanese, but the technique is partially Japanese and partially Chinese because he didn't actually learn from um, a Japanese person, right? So when you look at a menu, you can only get it gather so much. You kind of have to add in your own knowledge. So the technique itself are not Japanese per se, but the weapon itself can definitely came from the Japanese. And just in case you were wondering why he actually want to adopt this blade, it's not to fight the pirate, of course, because even if he learned this blade during the, the battle, and he tried to teach his own truth with it, they will still be inferior to the Japanese pirate because they've been using this for a very long time, right? You just fresh learned it, you can't really win. So the actual purpose that he actually adopted this blade is to fight his own battle back at the north side, right? Because he's seen 
how effective this blade is versus the conventional Chinese weapon, which is spear, and obviously the sidearm, which is the short, broad sword. So if he actually learns this blade and he takes it up north, he can basically crush re rebellions a lot easier, right? Because he would not have to edge. So that's most likely the reason he adopted this blade and started training his own troops with so it. It's not to fight a pirate, is to actually fight other people from the north who uses conventional Chinese weaponry. Well, so I hope at this point it has become more than obvious that Miao Dao, which connects to Dan Dao Fa Xuan, which connects to Wu Dao, which connects to Xie Ji Guang, which connects to Japanese pirate, right? This whole connection should be pretty clear and undisputable. And we should all know by now that Miao Dao, originally this weapon design came from the Japanese pirate. And there's no shame in learning from an enemy if they have a better weaponry or mechanic or solution, right? There's really no shame in that. It is very stupid for modern Chinese people to have this national pride so much as they want to erase history, right? That is very bad. Next, we're going to look at a, a side note, but it's a quite interesting discrepancy between what's recorded and common sense through logic, okay? So basically, by Qi Guang's writing, as well as other people's account of the Japanese bat the pirate campaign, the Japanese pirates seem to be predominantly armed with Nodachi. Okay? However, if we look at the Japanese side of the history, Nodachi is not a common weaponry. Sure, it is used quite a lot during the, the battle, right? especially uh, before the Togawa Shogunate, it's been used a lot in battle, but it's not a weapon that every soldier is equipped with. Okay? The reason being, it's so much harder to produce a blade that is, you know, 1.4 to 1.6 meters long, right? For those, those of you that don't know, uh, it's far easier to create a 1 meter blade like the conventional katana or tachi. The moment the blade gets longer, the longer it gets, the easier it is for the blade to break. So the, the quality of steel and the craftsmanship becomes exponentially harder when the blade goes longer. So to create a battle worthy Nuodachi is actually very expensive. And common soldier cannot afford this, right? And even among samurais, only the more well off ones can afford a proper nodachi for the battlefield. So it's actually not possible logically for the pirates that invaded the China southern sea border to all be equipped with nodachi. But according to the General Chi Guang's account, he only ever mentions about the difficulty, or he mentioned other difficulty as well, like they are brave and they're not scared to die. And they, they move really, they have high agility, jump really high. But weaponry wise, he always talk about the superiority of Nodachi. He doesn't talk about other we weaponry, which kind of gives an illusion or misconception to modern people that everyone during the battlefield used Nodachi. But I do not believe this is the case, right? If, they can't if not everyone can afford it in Japan, then these pirates who are too poor to return to Japan certainly can't each have a Nodachi. And furthermore, um, there's no Nodachi uncovered during the late Ming Dynasty campaign that survived to this day. There's also then suggest that it's probably relatively rare on the battlefield. Otherwise, we should actually have, you know, a historical and antique, you know, blade that survived during the campaign. I mean, late Ming Dynasty is not that long ago, so the blade should survive. But the fact that we don't have them, we don't have the one from Japan, right? We have the ones that are made by Qi Guang and people thereafter, the Chinese made one, but we don't have the Japanese blade. I mean, they defeated the pirates, so if it is a common blade, then there should be quite a few that were dropped by the run, you know, the retreating army, the retreating pirates, and they should have them, you know, picked up and looted and, and kept in the archive, but we don't have any. This also suggests that the blade is probably not wielded by all the members of the Japanese pirate, or the so-called Japanese pirate, because we've said they are not actually all Japanese. And lastly, another interesting discrepancy, right? If you can see on the diagram here, which is taken from the manuscript that T.J. Guang supposedly uncovered during his campaign, right? The, the Yin Liu, the Kage Ryo manuscript, you can see is drawing of, of ape or monkey showing different motions with a blade. Now, this basically does go in line with the Japanese tradition, right? They call it uh, Yuan Fei, the flying monkey. They have a weird fascination with, with monkeys uh, in Japan. Not a bad thing, I mean, monkeys are agile and physically superior to humans in many ways. 
So the point is that the, the fact that the diagram draw, drawing are of monkey, not human, that's the Japanese uh, tradition, as far as I can tell. But interesting thing here is that you can see the blade is actually not Nodachi lens, right? If you compare this to the Dandao Fashion illustration, you can see the Dandao Fashion illustration, the blade is actually really long. But over here, the blades actually seem to be a regular Tachi or, Noda, uh, or, or Katana size. Of course, one could argue that, uh, that maybe the artist couldn't draw long blades, so you know, it is uh, artistic licensing, so to speak, and they basically drew the, speed, uh, the blade shorter. That is one way of explaining it. But if we actually look at the, the catalog of this you know, Kage Ryo um, you know, Kenjetsu, the movement list as it's listed actually come from Tachi, like Tai Dao Shu, right? Tachi Kenjutsu. It's actually not Nodachi skill. I mean, obviously, Kage Ryu does have Nodachi, take, uh, Nodachi technique as well. But this catalog seems to record catalog if we, you know, if we take it and we look at the Japanese Kage Ryu counterpart, um, it actually looks like more in line with that than with Nodachi. So what this could suggest is that uh, Qigong actually uncovered a menu intended for the regular sized Tachi, not Nodachi. But the few individuals um, that did wield a Nodachi during the battle were much more fearsome in his mind and therefore he wanted to make use of that weapon and not the regular blade. And which is why uh, he took the, this menu and the uh, information he got and he added to his own knowledge and his you know, staff skill and spear skill and he reinvented a Chinese version of martial art or of military art that make use of the Nodachi weaponry but the menu he got most likely is a menu for Tachi or, or Katana, right? It's, it is not meant for Nodachi and over here you can also then see a, an illustration of the Japanese pirate at the time you can see that they are carrying the blade uh, on the waist, okay? Uh, not actually, they don't carry on the blade because it's the blade is simply too long to carry over there. They usually have it on the hand or they carry it on the shoulder when they walk around. Or, you know, in Japan, if you're like a samurai, you have a, you have a page, right? Someone, or like a squire in, in Europe will carry the blade for your servant. So you don't basically stash a uh, Nodachi into your belt. That is not uh, practical. So you can see in this illustration, the blades are actually drawn here that were carried on the waist are most likely either katana or, or tachi. And you do have to keep, keep in mind that the Chinese at the time are not well versed in the Japanese culture. They can't tell the difference between a nodachi, a tachi, a katana, etc. All they can see that it's a Japanese blade and it probably all looks similar to them in the heat of battle. So they don't have the time to sit down and study the intricate difference between each variant of the Japanese blade. Which is most likely where this confusion comes in. So my point is, chances are that Nodachi was not the main weapon used by all the pirates that, that raided the Chinese seaboard. It's just that those who did use Nodachi had such a great impact on the battle that Qi Guang really was impressed by the result of that weapon that wanted to, um, to adopt it. And he probably didn't understand the difference, therefore when he uncovered the manuscript, he kind of just you know, thought it must be a manuscript for the Nodachi, or maybe he knew but he decided to use it for the Chinese Nodachi anyway. Okay, we don't actually know what happens. But this is basically another interesting part of this history that people don't really talk about. It's a possibility that the menu was not about Nodachi, and Nodachi was not the main weaponry, but Qi Guang still adopted it, rather than adopting a katana or a tachi, which probably for him is not that much different from a Chinese uh, you know, sidearm dao or the broadsword. Alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's a bit different from what I usually do. So I hope this is enjoyable. And I hope that you've uh, learned something that you didn't know about the history of Miao and Wardao and the Japanese uh, pirate versus the Chinese Ming Dynasty military history. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can you know, get updated whenever I upload new content. And if you can, please support me on Patreon. It will help me greatly in producing quality videos on a consistent basis. And lastly, I hope everyone still keeps safe and stay away from crowds. You know, watch out for your health and personal well-being. In the meantime, I hope everyone best of luck in this crisis. Thanks for watching Tristan's martial art channel, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.